Because what they learn is it's typically taking an average of 50 days to effect a repair. It can take as long as 150 days to effect a repair. This makes their sphincters move. They are shocked. But you don't know why. Then the fourth step is you must go and study the flow. <coughs> this isn't read the procedures manuals. This isn't ask the people what they do. This is follow pieces of work, follow repairs. And then the puzzle starts to unravel. You see, the reason it's taken as long as 152 days is, first of all, you discover that quite a lot of the time the supervisors or the tradesmen are cancelling repairs because the tenant wasn't in. I'm not going to be punished on my targets because the tenant wasn't in, so I cancel repair. And when the tenant calls up, failure demand will start another repair. This is normal behaviour. This is using people's ingenuity to survive in a system. Another thing you learn is that one repair from a tenant's point of view could be four repairs in this system. If they have a broken window, we turn up and board it up, tick, emergency. But then we might have to do the plastering and the painting and whatever else. So there's a whole series of other jobs, all on 28-day targets, so it can run on for ages. But you also find a deeper problem. You see, you start to discover that basically, from a design point of view, you've got somebody who doesn't understand the plumbing, talking to somebody in a call centre who also doesn't understand the plumbing, who gives a specification to someone who does. Are you ever going to get that right? And, and then when you ask, another measure of capability is, OK, you know, let's get the managers going out with the tradesmen. The only thing we can focus on here is when we walk into a property, do we fix it? At the time we walk in, first time. And the answer is less than 40% of the time. Well, it's no surprise. Now, when you know all of this, you can redesign. And so move to step two. When you redesign, it's very important to understand the value demands. That's why we're here. So in housing repairs, you have to study demand from the properties, and you study demand by geography. Because well, you know, one of the things you learn is that different estates were built at different times, have different problems, and these problems are predictable. And what these managers discovered having studied demand, value demand over time, is that the property repair problems are predictable. Having understood that, what they then did is they resourced for their tradesmen to be available to what we call the upper limit. Now, this actually means there'll be times when your tradesmen are sitting on the backside. <gasps> Can't have that. Can't have that. You know, my job is to sweat the assets, you know. No, 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 no. It's, like, it's the same as Taichiano in the manufacturing uh, Toyota system. He said, you know, don't buy a machine and run it all day. That's a stupid thing to do. <laughs> Creates inventory. You think you've got lower unit costs. Actually, your costs have gone up. What matters is that the machine is ready when the flow comes along. And it's the same with the tradesmen. We need to have sufficient tradesmen with the right expertise so when demand hits, we can fix the problems. And then they decided the right way to do this, because the demand is predictable and they've resourced for it, the right way to do this is to actually, when the tenant rings up, to say, OK, you've got a repair. What day and what time would you like it done? And when they started doing this, quite a lot of the tenants on the other end of the line just went silent. You know? <laughs> no, no, I'm ringing the council. You've got to be kidding. No, 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 really, we need the day and the time. Well, I'll give you the day, but I don't mind what time. No, 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 the way we work is, OK, we'll give you a time. This is when we're coming, because that's the way we work. They do another remarkable thing. When the tradesman gets into the house, he rings back to the centre and says, this is how long I'm going to be. <gasps> Shit, you can't do that. You can't do that, can you? These guys will just goof off all afternoon, won't they? Well, they don't, you see, because they're all working in a visible system. And why is this important? Because what they learned when they studied the system is that no two jobs are the same. Standard times is for dummies. You see, if you use standard times as they do in BT, I mean, this happened to me. 
you know, there I am. I, I actually, I called BT. I wanted a little job done. I was amazed that I got through, got to a born body. I was amazed they said the man's coming Friday, and then I was double amazed that he turned up on Friday. <laughs> but he walked into my house, and he, I made him a cup of coffee. Uh, he looked at his palm top. I explained what I wanted done. He looked at his palm top, and he went, no, nah, it's not what it says on here, so. <laughs> well, you just told me it's not what it says on here. I'm going to go. <laughs> now, I made him a cup of coffee, so he couldn't go. He had to drink his coffee. But I kind of discovered that basically if he didn't leave my house by 10 past 10 in the morning, his tracker system in his van would send a signal to his manager who beat him up. <laughs> and then it took about four months before we got a simple job done. And when it was done, it took 20 minutes. You know, that's how you build your cost. What these guys have understood is in service organisations there's variety in demand. You have to design to absorb that variety. The best way to absorb that variety is to have the tradesman say how long he's going to be there. Now, they did this manually. They developed a T-card system on a wall with days and tenants and jobs in time order. This is when that tenant wants that job. And then from the, the guys saying how long they're going to be, another T-card system saying this is when the guy's going to come free today. So you can see it and watch it visually. Oh look, that job's coming to the time. This guy's going to be free. He'll get that job. And they also did another remarkable thing. When the tradesman's on site and he doesn't have the materials that he needs in his van, usually because they're too big to carry in a van, they ask him when he wants them delivered. You see, because they've understood that if you're changing out a bath, you want the new bath to arrive when the old bath is coming down the stairs. That's perfect. You see, if it arrives before that, you've got a problem, haven't you? Where are you going to put it? You want two baths in a bathroom? That's tricky. You're going to leave it outside? Dangerous, you know. <clears throat> Simple, isn't it? This is a system designed for perfect. They'll never get to perfect. This is the same thinking as Taijiano in the Toyota production system. A system designed for perfect. You'll never get to perfect, but you've got the measures and methods in your hands to drive you towards perfect. The levels of failure demand, of course, fell from more than 50% to negligible amounts. And this is important, you know, because things will always go wrong. Stuff still goes wrong, but nothing goes wrong predictably anymore. And that's how they have achieved delivering a service on the day and the time you want it and halving the costs. And how have you halved the costs? Well, because now 99.9% .9 of the time when you walk in, you fix it. And it's a great lesson to managers in managing value, not cost. When you manage value, you drive costs out of a system. If you manage costs, you drive your costs up. So now they've got a system that's working and it's all manual. So then, Third step, pull IT into new design. So they, they called around the local IT suppliers in Portsmouth and they said, well, you come in and have a look at this. And they found this guy and they said, look at this. Look, this is how it all works. And these are our T cards. We want you to automate this so we can see it all just on visual displays, all, all, all electronic. And the guy said, OK, I understand this. We can do that. Um, it will take uh, three weeks and it will cost you £2,000. <laughs> And they said to him, if you can do it in two weeks, we'll give you three. And he did. <laughs> <laughs> A normal IT system for handling repairs is north of £150,000. And it does all the wrong stuff. Remember? No, so I suppose this is the bad news for you, isn't it? <laughs> See, but the good news is it works. And, of course, those of you who are thinking would realise not only does it work for them, but there's another 700 organisations out there doing the other shit. Customers. <coughs> uh, I want to sort of back off a little and talk about the problems in industrialising service organisations. I mean, I should say, first of all, that I've never worked in manufacturing. I don't want to work in manufacturing. I've only ever worked in service organisations. Um, and in my lifetime, we've seen service organisations become industrialised. 
And it's a fundamental mistake. The idea is that we'll get economy from scale. It's a myth. You know, I was with a... Uh, we, we, they talk these days about front offices and back offices, don't they? Do they do that in your country? Okay, and, and, and sharing offices, that'll do it, you know. So, I've, I mean, I was with a, a leader of a council in, in the UK a couple of weeks ago. And I said to him, I bet you built a call centre. Uh, because we had a target in the UK, every local authority had to have a call centre by 2005. I said, I bet you built your call centre in 2005. He said, yeah, we did, we did, to comply with the target. And I said, I bet when you opened your call centre, you had more calls coming in than it said in the plan. He said, yeah, how did you know? <laughs> I said, well, I saw it in the 1980s in banks. You see, what's going on is the same, in, in, right now in the public sector in the UK, the same as what happened in banks in the 1980s. You know, basically banks said, oh look, ACD, or call about call distributions just come along. This enables us to cut our costs. If you remember, if you manage costs, your costs go up. So what they did is they said, look, we can get rid of these expensive people in our branches that cost us £16,000 a year, that do the telephone work, and we'll move the telephone work to the armpits of Britain, places like Swansea and Scunthorpe, where we can hire people at £8,000 a year and give them the telephone work to do. And so to do this, they, they sent round the men in the white coats with the stopwatches, how many calls, how long they take, that size the work, you know, got rid of the people, trained the people in Swansea and Scunthorpe, turned the switches, boom, demand went up. It should have been a signal. It's failed demand, it should have been a signal. It's failed demand because, you see, they kind of didn't get the idea that the telephone work was part of a process somewhere. They just set, took the telephone work away. Specialisation is what they think. <laughs> but they didn't see it as a signal. What amused me, and this is going back in the 1980s, the guys running the call centres, they'd actually planned for three, uh, and the demand went up, so they opened a fourth. And demand went up, they opened a fifth. And by this time, the chief executives already exercised about cost, and the guys running the call centre said, well, boss, it's like the M25. That's the motorway that goes around London. The day it opened, it filled up like a car park. They said, we couldn't have predicted how much our customers love us. They keep bringing us up. <laughs> Bonkers. <laughs> Bonkers. And what, they, you know, what else do we do when, when demand rises? Well, we specialise the work. Oh, that, well, that's a good idea. Let's specialise the work. We'll have you do loans, we'll have you do mortgages, and that will cut down our training costs. Now, because we specialise work, another way we can reduce our costs is put on an IVR. Press one for this and two for that. And you know as a customer how well that works, don't you? Because you're, I mean, you're all waiting for the warm body. Uh, or, 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 no, first of all, you're waiting for the explanation that you've got of the problem in your head, aren't you? And then you don't get that, so you press any bloody thing to get through to the warm body. <laughs> and then when you get through to the warm body, you explain your problem. They say to you, yes, we understand your problem, but you're in the wrong queue. <laughs> Stupid you. So they move you to the back of the right queue, and then when you get through, you explain your problem again. Now, you see, we've just doubled our transaction cost doing that. 